So the sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Chad on Score North and scorenorth.com. You got to look at each individual possession of why did we get stopped. Um, and it's a combination of things. It's never any one thing. So there will be a lot to correct. And uh, that's what you know tomorrow and early this week will be all about. Dude, why is everyone so solemn? They won. They came from behind with 37 seconds left. Greg Joseph with a clutch game-winning field goal. All right, everyone, everyone's all focused on how ugly it was. Sometimes you got to win ugly in the National Football League. All right? Yeah. Why don't you turn that frown upside down, Kirk Cousins, Vikings fans, Judd? You're going to have to go back and watch every single play from the last 24 years to know as much as I know. <laughs> when you do that, get back to me. And then we can talk. The the I love the the NFL sort of cop out and coaches and cousins uses it. So what went wrong? Well, we got to go back and look at the film, right? Yeah. And then when they go back and look at the film, and you ask them again later, like, well, so what went wrong? Well, we're really just focused on the next. <laughs> That's, <opponent. right. laughs> That's so true. <laughs> Wait, yeah, I mean, the Carolina Panthers are all we're thinking about right yeah, now. We just so got to be. Can't tell you. Yeah, about we've that. we've flushed that previous game. Cor- you're right. We're on, on to the next here. Uh, all right, it's Mackie and Judd, daily Minnesota sports entertainment. And every Tuesday, we hold people accountable. We go through who gets it and who doesn't. We'll get to random season recall on the show, uh, perhaps some uh, overreactions from me on Three Wolves preseason games. Mm-hmm. I'm already planning parade routes. I don't know about Actually. you guys. Hennepin's all kind of broken up oh, all the God, time. We're going we're gonna to need a, a new route. Right oh, no, no one's going near there, man. <laughs> you cannot drive down it. Pain. So uh, we'll figure something out, but let's start. Let's start with someone who doesn't get it. And I hate to do this because I, I feel like I feel like he has good intentions. I feel like he's caught in a spin cycle of old school mentorship. But I got to do it to you. Clinton Alexander Kubiak doesn't get it. The Vikings okay. offensive coordinator. Is that his real middle name or did you just make it up? What do you guys think? Do you I think his real, real middle name. name is Alexander? Yes. It, it's oddly specific, and it doesn't sound like you're it's trying common. to be fun. It's pretty, no, it's pretty common middle name. No, but I mean, name. you you ordinarily go with like something that's much more generic than. Well, Ed. you know, it doesn't. You know, his middle name doesn't start with a K because that would be weird. So you can rule one letter out. The Lions had had a player <laughs> once named Harry Colon. Like <laughs> weirdness doesn't. Parents don't always think about it, man. Um, Let's name him Harold. Harold Cologne. Harold Col- no, it's Harry Cullen. No. Yeah. Okay. What uh, I'm going to say? Yes, that's his real middle name. It um, is Alexander. Is his middle name? It up. Okay. Um, I believe it's not Clinton though. It's just Clint. Clint Alexander yeah. Kubiak, and okay. the offense that he leads has so much potential. You know, Kirk Cousins, clean pocket, play action. He's really good. Justin Jefferson's one of the five best receivers in the NFL. Thielen still has some gas in the tank. KJ Osborne. I mean, you got two starting caliber running backs on your roster. And yet, the Vikings rank 28th in the NFL in second half scoring. They are averaging at home this season five points per game in the second half, or five points per second half. They do nothing in the second half. They've barely scored any touchdowns in the second half. This is it like three? Two or three second half touchdowns all season. Yeah, they haven't scored for this yeah. team. Uh, last two games, they have not scored a touchdown. Uh, they, and I think in the last three games, the only touchdown they've scored was a defensive one when when they returned uh, the pick against Kyler Murray, right? So yeah, I mean they had two two second half touchdowns in the first week of the season against the Bengals, if I'm yep. not mistaken. But twenty uh, eighth in second half scoring, so it's 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 conservative. Mm-hmm. It's 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 both. By the way, it's also the time of the game where you don't get the benefit of scripted plays. You could script the first quarter pretty much. Yep. Okay. Once you get away from that, how is your offense performing when it's more improvisational? You got to call plays on the fly. Uh, also worth noting, the Vikings are second in terms of running the football on second and long. And by second, I mean they have the second most runs on second and long. So everything is just conservative. Let's just gain a couple yards. Get yep. it to third and nine, like, <laughs> yep. dude. Take the freaking training wheels off this thing, or you're. St- and by the way, you're going to be forced to. Maybe not as much against Carolina, although you're going on the road. You're going to have to score some points on the road to win that game. But you want you want to beat Dallas. You want to beat Baltimore, the Chargers, the Packers, the four games God out is. of the bye. 
dude, you gotta you gotta open this thing up a little bit. Um, so Clint Kubiak, sorry, buddy, you don't get it. Is this the perfect storm in some ways as well of of in a bad way? What can go wrong with a Zimmer guided, not led, guided offense in this sense? When you've got Norv Turner, they might fight, but Norv's got ideas. Like Norv is not go, going to say, okay, Mike, that's just fine. You're the boss. Oh, my God. He's going to say, well, we're going to incorporate some of, of what I want to do here or I quit, which he did we think um pat Shermer, same sort of way did a brilliant job but clearly knew his stuff and i think he knew probably and, and had enough time in the league to tell mike to sort of stand down and be like yeah. mike what you what you want to do here is fine but i've got to incorporate um stefanski had gary senior who clearly met with mike a lot and i'm sure at times said you're full of crap mike here's what we no, but G- Gary was conservative by nature as Gary well. Was Gary loved to run the football. But yes, but what I but my point is now now we've gone to a guy who's conservative by nature potentially and is not going to give Mike any lip back. He's going to basically be like, "Okay, Mike, we'll do what you say." So I wonder if this is the perfect storm in a very bad way of what happens when Mike is just really dictating things. And I don't think that there's a guy offensively on the staff to say, hold on a second here. Like it would have to be Kirk. I think don't Mike you? And, and Mike, we already knew about, you know, well, yeah, to your Kirk point, you know, the guy's been in the NFL for a decade. He's been a yeah. starting quarterback for seven years. And yes, he definitely has flaws. And you know, the fact that his teammates and coaches are talking about him like being a better leader this season. Like, why is that even a, like where people were people talking about Matt Ryan at age 33? Like he's a good leader now. No, he's been a good leader for 10. So that's a little weird on the Kirk front, but like, why, why wouldn't Kirk have more say or more? And maybe that's been some of the tug of war, but Mike Zimmer with his quote after that game, when Courtney Cronin asked him, we played it on yesterday's show. Why did you guys run the clock down with two timeouts and 40 seconds left in the first half? Like, why? That's plenty of time to matriculate your way into field goal range or maybe even more. Throw the ball to Justin Jefferson, right? And his answer was, well, you know, we've made some mistakes in previous situations like that. And so, you know, we were going to kind of feel it out. We were going to run the ball. If we got a big gain on first down, if we got a first down type gain on first down running the ball, like how many 10 plus yard carries are you really going to have, you know? Right. From, especially from your own side of the field like that. Um, and if we got a first down, then we would have proceeded. Okay, so you're telling me that your your strategy there is to pray to God that you get like a nine-yard gain on first down. Then you're going to have to burn a timeout because, you know, it's a run play and you got tackled in the middle of the field. Why not throw an out route that gets you 12 yards out of bounds, preserve the timeout? Like, th- how risky is it? Is it riskier to give the ball – to Alex Madison or throw the ball to Adam Thielen. Like Kirk Cousins has a low interception rate. Alex Madison fumbles all the time. <laughs> like he yeah. fumbled against Seattle last year. He fumbled last week. Yeah. So like Mike doesn't have, if Mike had a better 30,000 foot view of, all right, let's be aggressive on offense and let's throttle down with 40 seconds left and two timeouts. How you guys get there, you figure it out. But he, he brings, he pulls the reins back from 30,000 feet and it makes things worse. Mike doesn't care about, he doesn't care or understand or give thought to his personnel. He only cares about one thing, his philosophy. Mm-hmm. So, like, he doesn't think about Justin Jefferson, Thielen, K.J. Osborne. Uh, Kirk can throw. Yeah, let's he open it up a little bit. Yeah. He he thinks he could have me carry in the rock and would think I'm going to give it to Judd because that's safer. That's what we Three do. Three yards and a cloud of dust. Kind of- yeah, I wouldn't get three yards. I'd die. But the fact, but the fact is, he doesn't give thought to, and and that and that goes big picture back to why having a defensive guy that doesn't really understand or give a lot of thought to offense is really contrary to how this league runs now. Because don't you want your coach to be like firing away, thinking up, okay, we got this play, we got that play, we got this play, um, and so yeah, it gets to be. A difficult thing because you're literally dealing with a guy who is afraid of screwing up and i will always contend this i'm sorry my but i do not i think if you're an expert on one side of the ball you have a thousand blind spots on the other side of the ball unless you're a really well 
rounded coach, and there aren't a ton of those. And so, you know, Mike is, it's not like Mike really gets it. Mike, Mike's thinking, how's the defense going to stop us? Not how can my offense best attack their defense? Mm-hmm. All right, not to dump on the whole Clint Kubiak even more parade here of who oh, doesn't boy. get it. No, let's, this is therapeutic. Let's, let's, let's keep doing Monday it. Monday and oh, Tuesday is all about oh, therapy. Oh, Wednesday, Wednesday new, it's it's a look ahead. Look ahead okay. Wednesday. We're not yeah. talking about not the Detroit game starting tomorrow. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> we're, no, on we're, we're, on, right, we're on to Carolina. On to Carolina. On to Carolina. Okay. Carolina. okay. Uh, who doesn't get is Clint Kubiak for not stretching the field. The Vikings, going into Monday Night Football at least, Ranked 31st in the NFL on passes 20 plus yards attempted. So for whatever reason, they don't like stretching the field. But on Sunday, when Kirk did put the ball in the air through 10 plus yards, he found Justin Jefferson a ton. And Justin Jefferson put up a big day when he targeted him 6 for 6 for 115 yards. So he was able to get Justin Jefferson going by stretching the field. For whatever reason, when the Vikings really want to shove it down and, and really want to take more pass attempts, they don't want to do that. And it, I think it really limits the Vikings' offense. And even though the running attack is what it is, and Alexander Madison still technically has a big day in the, in the passing game and in the running game yesterday against the Lions, this offense is too talented with Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen to not be taking more shots down the field. And yeah. it's frustrating. So Clint Kubiak, Vikings offense, stretch the field, dude. I found it on... Um, Pro Football Focus here too. So, so uh, Kirk Cousins and I'm going to use Kirk because he's the quarterback in the rankings here. But it, this is a schematic. This is, this is partially scheme. It's partially Zimmer conservative guiding hand, and it's partially Kirk tends to avoid risky throws more than some other quarterbacks. Like he he fears interceptions a little bit too much. Um, but the Vikings have attempted 15 passes of 20 yards or more in the air. So basically three per game. The Raiders have attempted 35. Tom Brady has attempted 32. Josh Allen, 27. Lamar Jackson, 27. Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah. 25 has attempted 10 more than the Vikings so far this season. Yep. And it's like, you know, I, well, but yeah, but it's risky. Okay, you might throw an extra pick, but you might get an extra touchdown as well. well. But here's the thing I don't get, okay? So I, I did get the the football Viking defender heads uh, tweeting back at me Monday about, well, the Lions were playing two deep safeties and you can, you got to take what the, what the Lions give you. And my response was, one, it's the Lions. Two, a ton of teams now play that. So it's not like, it's not like, you know, Detroit is the only team on Sunday playing too deep. And I'm willing to bet that a lot of teams that saw too deep still went deep at, at times. And the third thing is this. Okay, so let's say for the sake of this conversation, Justin Jefferson is taken out. So you're like, I can't throw to him. He's doubled or something. Uh, KJ Osborne, Thielen, you can't take everybody away. Like you can't say too deep takes every receiving option away. That makes no sense. Of course it doesn't. Um, So so those factors are are what drive you crazy. And, And I like the fact that Jefferson led the team in receptions on Sunday, but for Adam Thielen to officially catch two passes on the last drive and that's it. Uh, come on. That, yeah. that makes no sense. That, that, and, and you know, KJ Osborne deserves chances too. And I guarantee you that there were shots there of some sort to take to him that weren't, uh, at least attempted guarantee. Uh, another, another excuse for why don't, why don't the Vikings take more shots down the field and be more aggressive is well, their offensive line can't hold up that long. How are, you, how are you supposed to throw the ball down the field if, you know, you hit your third step on a drop back and there's, you know, all four uh, defensive linemen are in your face, right? I mean, every snap, he's just, oh, my God, what do I do? He's going to – he's all these guys are getting forklifted off the line. Well, the Vikings don't have an amazing offensive line. But let's deal in fact here. According to ESPN.com's team pass block win rate, yep. the Vikings are 21st, tied with Tampa Bay and just ahead – of the Raiders, who are 24th, Tampa Bay and the Raiders attempt more deep passes than any team in the NFL with an equal or worse pass blocking unit than the Minnesota Vikings have so far this season. Mm-hmm. So it's not if 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 the Raiders are going to deal with pressure and still throw the ball down the field and the Buccaneers are going to do it, then it's a schematic and play calling issue or a, or a Kirk 
moving off of Justin right. Jefferson because he's not wide open issue. Right. 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 And if, if I'm correct about this, I believe the PFF grades for the Vikings pressures against Detroit were absolutely fine. Yeah, they were. Like, I it's mean, not like, De- I mean, the Detroit uh, defense with what they currently have are not going to get home much. They're just not. Like, that was the game to, to be like, let's do some stuff here. Hmm? Sorry, yeah. but they still, don't get into this well. All right, Judd, who gets it, who doesn't? <laughs> all right, uh, who doesn't? He's muttering to himself. Well, I just, just don't <laughs> give me this. Every team's <laughs> tough. Every <laughs> team's, <laughs> every <laughs> team's <laughs> difficult. Well, it's matter, right? every, long. <laughs> we're playing every team, and they're all different. Bleep that. It's the Lions well, no. at home. Okay, Last one time. one more quick thing on this. Like, we, we love to sharpen, by we, I mean, like, the royal we, right? We sharpen this pencil all the time in terms of, like, we, we scapegoat the offense or Kirk. Right. So... You need to be more aggressive. You've got these weapons. You want to score more. Po- you want to score more than five points on average in the second half of home games. Mm-hmm. Throw the ball down the field. Throw the ball to Jefferson. Okay, and so that's sort of the that's the mission statement. How do you score more points? Be more aggressive offensively. Take more chances, like some of these other teams are. And then the excuses start coming in. Right. Well, the offensive line. Well, the bracket coverage. You know, two safeties over the top. You know, it's, well, well, it's, you know, the offensive line, Kirk, this. It's like, okay, well, you know, you watch watch Josh Allen the other night. That dude's running for his life on half those snaps. I mean, that's a Chiefs defense. It's not that great. But, like, he flushes out to the right, throws a bomb off one leg 40 yards down the field. Like, other teams find a way to take chances down the field. The Vikings need to as well. All right. All right, who does not get it? The National Football League. John Gruden and this entire thing, and I will start by saying he deserved exactly what he got. He deserved to be fired. He quit, but he was about to be fired. But let's look at the big picture and realize John Gruden is a wart on the big toe of this entire league, and they burned it off last night, okay? Let's examine what is really going on behind the scenes that led up to Gruden getting in trouble. And I know it's not really sexy and it's boring, but it's the most important thing. So, so like if you're doing an investigation of, well, let's look into this Gruden thing. What you are going to find is a league that, that basically is gaslighting you at every single turn. So the the Gruden stuff came out because of exchanges that he uh, made with a Washington football team employee. And that was the investigation, not into the Grudens, not into one employee, but into the entire culture that Daniel Snyder had with the Washington football team. That investigation, which was closed, I think, a month or two back, uh, it surfaced 650,000 emails of evidence. 650,000 and the league declared the investigation's complete. We are going to deal with, with this internally. Uh, and by the way, we are not going to release anything. Fast forward to the last few days. I believe it was last week. And we find out that Gruden Gruden made what is 1000%. I don't care what he says, a racist comment about the, the head of the players association. But more importantly, what lurked in the background was several more tweets that offended not only uh, uh, blacks, but it offended basically everybody you could possibly offend, including Roger Goodell. And conveniently, the league takes a private investigation. We will be announcing nothing from this. We won't show you anything. And it leaks out to very particular and, and very credible sources the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, just what Gruden had said to the point of last night on on the countdown show before the game on ESPN where Schefter and the panel were going after Gruden hard without saying they only said that there have been more emails that surfaced. (laughs) They were sent by the league to the Raiders to handle the matter on their side, and they all ripped Gruden, so you knew that that either late last night, which is what transpired, or today, he was gone. But the fact is, I'll repeat it again, there are 650,000 emails that show what Dan Snyder did, what I'm sure uncover, I'm sure that unfortunately, John Gruden 
not alone in, in his homophobic, racist ways. And the league is going to tell you now, go away. This is all. And I think what Patrick t- told us on Rap with Royce earlier is, is absolutely correct. Because he ripped Goodell and called him a very bad word, they decided, well, we're going to get this out there. But they're going to gaslight us now and be like, the rest of this is private. Who else is implicated? And and if anybody believed for one second that Dan Snyder turned over the running of the Washington football team to his wife out of the goodness of his heart, I got some real estate to sell you. Yeah. He's been suspended. Come on. Yeah, I mean, I this is a this is a really interesting story here, and that I agree, John John Gruden. I think a lot of people felt like this is who he is behind the scenes for a long time, and here he is for everyone to see, right? And he just immediately resigned with, I'm sure, some urging uh, of the Davis family and the NFL. But yeah, I'd, I'd be curious to know. You know, he's emailing back and forth between him and the and Washington's Bruce team Allen. president, right, Bruce Allen. Bruce like, Allen, I yeah. kind of want to know what Bruce Allen had to say back to some of those emails. Six hundred fifty thousand you know, of these, man. Where, where, where do we stop here? Um, I, this this story has also brought out the, well, everyone says things that they wouldn't be proud of in their emails guy, which I heard from a lot on Twitter last night. Why don't you release your emails and see? I mean, you'd be very, very underwhelmed by my emails, which are mostly just like geeky Timberwolves opinions and, um, I don't know, like 50,000 emails every morning from websites I have somehow opted into their email list. <laughs> But that could be a long list. If you are an NFL head coach and if you are high up in an NFL front office and you are openly misogynistic, racist, and homophobic, mm-hmm. you deserve to be called to the carpet. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is a huge influential entity in our country, and the NFL has been trying to change its culture. Uh, I just think there's a there's a whole treasure trove of people just like John Gruden right. that could probably stand not to be canceled forever. But held accountable. All right. There's a huge difference between cancel culture and accountability culture. And yeah. John Gruden is experiencing accountability culture right now. Well, yeah. And and the thing, too, though, is don't now tell me that that's it. It's done. It's not done. And I know that. that that's the thing that drives me crazy about billionaires and sports leagues. They're going to tell you when it's done. No, you're not. And and. John Gruden again. He's a boil on your butt. If you're this league, he yeah. is a he, he. He's a he's a wart. He he's I like going the wart to be, on the toe. There we go. Well, That's better. He's going to be boil off. on your butt. Huh? A boy. He's a boil. He is such mm. a small piece Very of specific. this. Because here's what I want: turn on your fellow billionaires. I'd like to know what owners have said. Like, don't don't just say it stops with Gruden. And by the way, the rest of the league's fine. There are no homophobic, racist, misogynistic people in this league other than Johnny Gruden. Come on. Yeah. So, yeah, stupid. very, very uh, interesting, quick development from, uh, from oh, some emails got out to he's just gone from the Raiders within like 72 hours. Uh, all right, who gets it, who doesn't? I'm sorry, I'm going to stay on the who, the who doesn't get it train here. Okay. And this is, this is the first time I've ever done this, but I'm going back-to-back Jim Polad because I don't think – we could remind people enough, especially with some amazing playoff baseball going on. Two different things. Number one, the Twins have not won a playoff game since 2004. Let's stamp that on the beginning of every single Major League Baseball playoff time. game. I'm so, I'm so down right now because of that. Every like The intro for Twins games, when we fire these back up in spring training next year, the intro on the Bally Sports North, you know, doot, 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 you know pregame, like it should, <laughs> it should start. Yeah. What a Bizarro Bramer. Bizarro Bramer. This team hasn't won in forever. It's inexcusable, Justin. How pressure. Pressure. It, doesn't, it doesn't need to be a rant. It can just be, and uh, we're welcome in to Bramer. 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 Justin, your thoughts on today's spring training game? Like, uh, really hard. so number one, every single playoff team that made it to the division round won a playoff game this year. Something the Twins have been unable to do in 18 tries. And another reminder: if you're watching these teams throw haymakers at each other, late game, big outs, big home runs, clutch hits, 
well-constructed bullpens, great trades at the deadline. Just remember that all of those teams are chasing the Twins front office, which graded, according to Jim Polad, A+. Plus in 2021. Red Sox, I'm sorry, you're chasing the Twins. Giants taking a 2-1 lead, 107 wins, you're chasing the Twins, according to Jim Polad. So I just thought it was worth mentioning again for two straight weeks, Jim Polad doesn't get it. Mm. Woof. Sorry, Jim Polad. I, I saw a stat from, uh, from Boog Zombie actually last night. So, uh, cause, and I see a lot of baseball fans jumping on this too, and it's, it's a good it's a good point. Uh, Boog tweeted out that since the start of the 2019 playoffs, teams that out-homer their opponents are 73 and 11. So naturally, when the Twins out-homered the Yankees in game one of the 2019 ALDS, they still are one of those 11 losses because yeah. they did out-homer the Yankees in game one well, of, the, of the ALDS. They did try. They tried very hard. I'm saying there's a chance. I'm saying there's a chance. Another one uh, to tally up here is I don't think the Twins, we can check this, but I'm pretty sure it's been 17 straight postseason games since they scored more than four runs in a game. Mm-hmm. So they didn't. They haven't even accidentally scored like seven. Do you know who I fault? Clint Kubiak. <laughs> Take Matt the training shots. wheels off. Call some plays, man. <laughs> Call some plays, Clint. All right, All right Declan, I'll- who gets it, who doesn't? I'll, I'll go to who gets it. The NHL season does start today, and this is a pseudo who gets it uh, because mm. I have another comment, but the Seattle Kraken do play today. Um, I'm sure Phil is jacked up for uh, Seattle Kraken fever. They get the Vegas Golden Knights tonight. I, I believe it's in Vegas. I'm not sure if that one's in, yeah. in Seattle. I know no. it's, it's the later game, so I assume it's one of one of the two. Uh, but actually, who does get it is Bill Guerin. So Bill Guerin, who I, I've used before on who gets it, friend of the show, by the way, of on Score North and on Judd's Hockey Show. He comes on with us and talks puck, but... You know, Billy actually went a little viral for a clip because the Wild are launching, you know, their Becoming Wild show, which, you know, is, is in general is kind of can be a little hilarious to me. It's just kind of funny stuff. But this clip of Bill Guerin talking to Captain Jared Spurgeon, and I think it just signifies the change in culture with the Minnesota Wild. Listen, you guys know what this is all about, right? Right? What's it all about? Spurgey? Hard work and having fun. F- that. This is about f-ing winning. Oh, I dude, love it, dude. Inject get, I mean, it. It, it, it. It is. It is exactly what we've been talking about. And I don't know if Spurgeon, like Spurgeon, actually has a little smirk on his face, and if people couldn't yeah. hear because it, it was a little muffed, he says hard work and having fun. And then and he said it in jest. I'm assuming that yeah. he was kidding. Yeah, and he does. And he puts a little smile on his face because Bill Guerin very quickly says, "Bleep that." This is about bleeping. Winning and this is entire culture change that Bill Guerin is talking about. It's why Parisi and Suter have been bought out. It's why there's a new captain, a new cap, and alternate captains into this fold. It's why the Wild are now changing the guard. I don't know if they're going to be as good as Colorado this year. Colorado might be the best team in the NHL, but this changing of the culture, the Parisi, Suter, the Koivu, the Niederreiters, the Zuckers, that is officially dead. It's officially dead, and this is about winning. It's not about having fun and playing for your hometown team anymore. This is about winning. Culture yeah, shift. Bill Guerin. I have, I have a sneaky suspicion that because that, I, I watched that clip about five times, uh, that there was a time that somebody said that from the old guard. Because, like, first of oh. all, Spurgeon, it, it's almost like a wink, wink. Hard work like, and having fun. And yeah, like, all somebody, like, like yeah. somebody from the old guard had said that, and then he's like, because, I mean, there is no question that Bill Guerin, uh, not too fond of of what he walked into with the culture for let's, the Wild, let, and I don't blame him. Let's play that clip again. I need that. I need that right into right. my veins here. Come on. Listen, you guys know what this is all about, right? Right? What's it all about? Spurgey? that this is about winning ah spurgeon oh, almost yes, knows dude. though yes yeah. he knows but, but who's great. the who's the guy to spurgeon's right who's look he when spurgeon says it, it there's a guy who was right with a twin set on he smiles, like smiles at him like oh it's hilarious it might have been eck i'm not 100 percent, but it's it's just a golden <laughs> clip dude it's, oh, it's so good it's outstanding God, it's what you imagine want. okay take that Put that in Derek Jim Polad's blood. In Derek Falvey. Does, Derek Falvey, to say does that? Derek Falvey and I, I Falvey's a great guy. I like Derek Falvey, but like, is he gonna walk into that clubhouse with that command and be like, "F this, we're right. winning a cup, we're and, winning a championship." And the best part, Bill Guerin has two cups. He's been a captain. He knows so, so like, he carries the street cred to say that. 
and not be, be like, you've never played, you know, you're not, who are you? He's actually one. So he's that's two, the best part. He's got I love two, that. Two cup grapefruits. He's that's got, what he's yes, got. He does. Oh, yeah, couple, he does. Yeah. couple cups, two different places. All right, Judd, put a wrap on. All right, who, who gets, gets it? it? Who doesn't? Who gets it? I'm going to go very general here. Stay in the world of football. And I'm going to say, who gets it? The team that takes the quarterback. Okay? The team that takes the quarterback. I will explain. I will explain by rewinding to the 2020 NFL draft first round. First round, first pick, Bengals, Joe Burrow. Good pick. I like that pick. Second pick, Chase Young. Third pick, Detroit. A couple quarterbacks on the board. No, no, no. We got Matthew Stafford. Jeff Okuda, a cornerback who's hurt right now. We're going to yeah. take a cornerback. We're going to get our shutdown corner. The Giants were next. We need a, we need a tackle, left tackle. Andrew Thomas is our guy because we got Danny Dimes throwing dimes. Exactly. <laughs> Allow oh, that. That's exactly right because then that allows pick five to come up and the Dolphins say Tua, which I actually, you know what, it might work. Take I don't know. But take take your shot. shot. And then at six, the Chargers are there and they're like, oh my goodness, look who slipped down the board to us. There's some questions about him, but we're going to be the team that is going to be in late October of 2021 praised on who gets it and who doesn't by Judd Zolgad because we're going to take Justin Herbert, who right now is one of the best things going. And this goes back to, I will take this back. Phil's going to get very upset. I don't care. I will take this back to the 2005 draft when I believe the 19th pick kick came up. And Aaron Rodgers is, sit, is sitting there. And Dante Culpepper has almost no guaranteed cash left. And you say to yourself, but we don't need a quarterback. Detroit said the same thing. We got Matthew Stafford. We're set. We're set for life. You don't take take the quarterback. Take the t- take. This is me the resisting chance. the urge to take fight fight back the, on that take terrible take. The chance. Take the chance. Because you know what? Do you think that the Detroit Lions came here saying, "Yeah, but we got Jared Goff now. We're fine." Anyway, more and more, more now than ever, if you have the opportunity. And I'm not talking like a third round guy. I'm talking like if there is considered a top quarterback pick. So this is not Christian Ponder, but Justin Herbert was considered a wild card, a lottery ticket. But if he worked, you win, you can retire. And the Chargers did it. And the Detroit Lions, imagine if they had him. Now, I'm not saying that that the development would be the exact same, but I am saying that they would have given themselves a chance. And a year after saying, we don't need a quarterback. Matthew Stafford is gone, and you've got Jared Goff and not Justin Herbert. Um, yeah. Are you are you tying this into the Vikings specifically, like for no, last right year's now. draft, or is it just more of a general? No, it's a general take. I am big on if there is a quarterback who is considered like a top ten. Yeah. And, and you're like, but we got to take our shutdown corner. Yeah, it's like I don't even take your take a quarterback and and and. Full disclosure, in 2005, that was tougher. Now I don't think it's tough. Well, it wouldn't have been. At, at no point in the history of football would it have been a tough decision to not draft Aaron Rodgers if you're the Vikings sitting on 26-year-old second in the MVP yeah. voting Dante Culpepper coming off a playoff win. All money but gone, though. that's a discussion for... Guaranteed money gone at them. But my point is Who now, cares, like, though? now <laughs> because because he's basically, he's basically done potentially. But now the key is this. Take the quarterback. Let me ask you this. All right. I, I This is against oh, my God. better judgment that I'm going to go down this path right oh, now. God. This is the biggest argument in Mackie and Judd on-air radio show history. Loved it. When Judd said the Vikings made a mistake not drafting Aaron Rodgers in the 2005 James. draft. Now, I didn't say seven. I said I believe it was 19 where they took Erasmus James, to be clear. Mm-hmm. 19. What was your thought before that? Like, as, as Rodgers is slipping... Because were you covering the Vikings then or the Packers? No, I was covering that draft for I was covering that draft for the Star Tribune. I was in Green Bay, so I was covering yeah. the Packers. With with full honesty, were you yep. sitting there in that moment? Dante Culpepper in his prime, in his mid twenties, coming up, he's like second in MVP voting. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Yep. And the Vikings won a playoff game the year before in Green Bay, so they yep. got some really good things going offensively. Yep. Were you sitting there in that moment thinking to yourself? Holy crap! The Vikings should draft Aaron Rodgers. I wasn't even. Was thinking, it a first guess from Judd Zolgad? I was not thinking about them because I I was covering the Packer draft. But what I was thinking is, 
going into that day, it was Alex Smith or Rogers first pick. Like yes. it, like we didn't know. And I kept thinking, when is somebody going to go up and stop his fall? So that's what that was. What I couldn't believe was he kept falling and falling and falling, and nobody. And now that now that there would definitely be a team that would trade up, but to see him fall that far. So I was not full disclosure th- thinking about that through the prism of the Vikings. I was through the prism of this guy was like a coin flip top overall quarterback and everyone's just a- allowing him to, to fall. And this will always go back to, to one thing Moss. Like how can no one stop that fall? Like at some point in time, Randy Moss had problems. I get that. Okay. But he was considered, I think, by many, a top 10 talent, and there was concerns. But wide receivers were, like, that would never happen today, or Aaron no, Rodgers. Like, I agree. But wide receivers wouldn't. were much more marginalized in but, the 90s. But what I'm saying, right, but what I'm saying is, so Moss falls here, comes here, is spectacular, in in some ways, changes the game. My thought process about the draft was forever changed of, okay, if you know a player is that good... How do you just allow him to, to fall? And if you have a coin flip first overall quarterback, and now he's in the twenties, what's yeah. going on here? And although I, I I will always disagree with your take on the Vikings and Aaron Rodgers, I also will give the Vikings more leeway for whiffing on Christian Ponder because of all like you got to take your shots, you got to take your you shots take on shot. quarterbacks. And the that. and the Vikings, you know, they got Kirk and they're comfortable with Kirk right now. And but they were like they're so comfortable with Kirk and they were so risk averse. Yep. That they that they would rather oh god we could go we like Fields a lot but I mean we don't want to give up a third round pick to move up for him like you know they're haggling over right. what the cost is and so they they hedge well I guess we'll go Kellen Mond instead in the third right. round and and then like nobody will nobody will judge us if he doesn't pan out because he's a third round quarterback and they rarely pan out right you know it's like it's so I I I'm okay with the ponder draft because they took a shot as big of a <laughs> failure as it was right but i mean chase young great player right i'd prefer the quarterback um okuda detroit could have justin herbert andrew thomas i'm sure he's fantastic and you've got danny dimes and i understand that but the core i think the thought process about these guys has to change like i think we have to be so afraid of of oh man because once you land one you're set. Man, you're set. Yep. So, all right. Um, Federated Insurance, here to help you guys. If you're business owners out there in the state of Minnesota, Federated's been a great partner for us on Mackie and Judd throughout the years. And uh, they're all about risk management, protecting your employees, protecting your bottom line, your business in general. Find out about all the great resources Federated has and all the great people you can tap into and the knowledge and expertise at federatedinsurance.com. And remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours.